Yeah. I'm telling you, it's a perfect. It, I'm they telling you, it's a perfect concept. They call it the Rambo. Coven leader. Da -da. The Baker team. And Rambo, <laughs> we could call him Raven instead of Rambo. You know. Yeah, he was called Raven by most of America. He had been called Lone Wolf. But yeah. Maybe call him Raven as well. Yeah, like you could get all the original call signs, you know, bring in all the Baker team members, Young and Troutman's training them, you know, or like, cause he he could train like a big a big you know league of them, and we could just watch exactly. them all die over time, you know. Yeah, it's a perfect TV show, and I was thinking. For a bonus, they should, instead of Ash them doing a prequel, they should do a Rambo miniseries prequel showing how Rambo became who he was. Like a Rambo miniseries. You know how they could do it? Yeah. Well, you know, obviously they have to get a Krenna lookalike. But they could do everything with everybody as lookalikes. And then just get someone with a, a, a Krenna type of voice. And have Sly... Sly giving, thing. have Sly lending his voice to it, and then doing it in POV, like you are Rambo, and then just have the the look like in in reflections, right? Uh, for the Trotman TV show or the or the miniseries? For say, say for like the miniseries. Yeah, so no, automatically, the automatically the the, the the people buy it because they think they're looking from Rambo's eyes, you know. Exactly, and we and we can and, and we can and they can cast uh, Mickey for that. Yeah, that would be amazing. Oh my God, uh, the stuff I thought of getting Mickey to do, I have such a hard time asking him to do stunts. Like I have a hard time with with asking him because when they do their stunts, they do them for real. You know, and like I was talking to him about it, and he was just like, you know, it's like, go ahead, torture me, whatever. But um. Yeah, it's like wow, like I, I was I was thinking about just having him in a pit with just like blood and guts and everything for like Dan the Dan Forth hallucination scene. Uh huh. He was hallucinating Dan Forth in the pit, coming out of the ground and all his intestines are all over the place and you know. Yeah, you're eating. I shouldn't talk about that while you're eating. But. No, no, no. I just no keep going. I'm listening. Yeah, but just I'm stuff listening. like that, like having him do some pretty crazy stunts, like jumping out of trees and, and stuff like that. We should we should uh, do, uh, do let him do that type of stuff for for Boss Man if, it, if it's safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is, he's got a cool scene in the night. There's a there's a point in the script where at night the base our little camp out area, like all day we've been walking around trying to reach this place. And we finally get there, and it's at nightfall, and we're, we're saying, okay, in the morning, we're going to investigate the area um, where Chapman goes missing. And we finally get there, and we camp there. Like, we do a little scout around, and we camp there. And then um, there's a scene where, where Jonas is, like, the tech guy. Jonas is one of the tech guys. And uh, we're looking over the footage from the cameras, and we start noticing the Moss Man is in different frames of the footage that we take in. That we didn't notice him the whole time, but actually he was stalking us. So we started seeing all these like, little... Like, uh, like, pre like Predator. Like Predator. Yeah. But like we're huddled in the tent and we're looking at the footage and, you know, we start seeing this footage, you know? And then uh, the Moss Man raids the camp right in the middle of the night. So it's like outside of one tent fucking around, someone's got a camera trying to peek out, trying to get a glimpse of him, whatever, and then uh, distracting back and forth, so like, you know, we could get him in like the, the open. Scene, like the scene in the, in the Blair Witch Project, when the, when the, the, the tent is shaking. Like. Yeah. But there'll be like two tents, like, you know, this is Mickey's tent, and then our tent. And uh, probably Steven's tent also. But we'll have like a, that would be like the, the con confrontation, like the confrontation with the creature, and there's a scene where like, Mickey has the bow and arrow, and it's at nighttime, and he like fires. He fires off. He fires off at it. And I was thinking of having him do this thing where he ties a glow stick to the arrow so that we can track it. 
But anyway, he shoots it, and I was thinking of using also like other the 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 neon fluid from the glow sticks as as creature blood, also. So he wings it, bam, and then we can we trace the blood, the neon blood it through the night off to get it right. And then you see like the arrow stuck to a tree with the with the glow stick on it, and then there's also blood on it too. That that starts off like the, the battle scene, you know. So, love it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty well, cool. listen, if you can't, since making it the character that uh, carries all the weapons, uh, although we all we all got weapons, we all got weapons. Oh, you? Yeah. I was thinking, if, you, if we can't afford to, to get any guns, we can just uh, find some airsoft ones on eBay. There's a lot on eBay and stuff. Mm -hmm. They're cheaper. Yeah. They're cheap, too. They just, they, and they look real, so. Well, I was thinking we could bring your plates down and make you a little Cobra handgun while you're here. Yeah. You could have, like, a multi-purpose uh, Cobra Trank gun slash, like, real weapon. I'm going to be using a sling bow. Uh, Mickey's going to be using the bow and arrow. Um, Chapman's got like some crazy airsoft rifles. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, I think, he owns some. He, he owns. He owns some in real life. Or? Yeah, I think I think I'm going to hook Jonas up with like a modified pump action shotgun, like a mini shotgun. Um, you know what? Re what weapon? That should that we should use that uh, that used to be popular in action movies, especially age action movies that you don't see anymore. Crossbows. Yeah. Well, this thing bow is kind of the same, but we should definitely get our hands on a crossbow. Like that would be amazing. But you haven't you haven't. There's a lot of bow and arrows lately, but you have not seen crossbows in action movies a lot lately. Back in the age, I remember there were a lot of uh, cover art. VHS cover art where the, where, the, where the character had crossbows. Yeah, even Rambo 2 in the James Cameron, he had a crossbow. Yeah. And in Rambo 3, he was supposed to have a crossbow. And of course, uh, you had that picture where Rambo's on the horse and he's, he's yeah. holding a crossbow. Yeah. That's actually in the novel, he has the crossbow. You know, he should have a crossbow in the, in, in the, in the, uh, in the next movies, hopefully. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, because, like, yeah. the only real thing we're seeing with crossbows now is, like, Walking Dead. It's Daryl from Walking Dead. Yeah. But, maybe on Game of Thrones, but it's definitely a weapon. That would be awesome to see in the next movie. That's another reason why I I feature the crossbow as a weapon for my concept for this I Spell on Your Great Video Game, because that... That is a very underrated movie weapon that deserves more recognition. Mm -hmm. That's why I, that's why I put it, that weapon for the I Spell on Your Great Video Game because I feel like of all because I feel like that that weapon uh, and hasn't been used a lot in movies lately. That's why I featured it for the game. That very very underrated weapon. Absolutely. You should actually shop that around to like Ubisoft or something, like email. Yeah. Email yeah, various. Yeah, I, I, exactly. Mm -hmm. There's one here. There's one in Montreal. Ubisoft. Yeah. Yeah, uh, maybe you can get me in contact with them. I would oh, definitely. Like that. And definitely. I really appreciate that, and um, absolutely, uh, I would love, I would love to get this game made. I mean, ever since I saw that movie, that remake, it, it, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's, 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 it is exactly what they were expecting it to do to you. It's, the, it stays in your head. Oh yeah. It's, I've seen, I, I've seen that movie about three weeks now. It's been like uh, three or, or four weeks now, and that movie still, I still can't get that movie out of my head. I saw the original. But it was the remake. I did, I saw the sequel first, mm -hmm. and then I saw the remake. And after I saw the original, but it was the remake that that really affected me. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah. All those old school odds. That's good stuff. I remember that one was good, the old one. But I remember the one that really did it for me was the Last House on the Left, like the original. Seeing that fucked me up. That was hard to watch. 
and then you you know then then you get from that you get awesome movies like like Straw Dogs and and like Taxi Driver and you know they weren't afraid to go for the he, grit. He, even First Blood, because, you know, straw, First Blood was like straw dogs in a way, like, you know, deliverance, all these, all these stories yeah. about people who were pushed to the limit, all these people who, stories about all these people who get pushed to the limit, even Death Wish, all these movies, uh, I even I, even the original I Spell in Your Grave, it, it, even, you can tell that the original I Spell in Your Grave was, was inspired by both Last House on the Left and Deliverance. Yeah. Yeah, la oh my god. Deliverance too, that that wow, that shook me up. Watching that movie. That shook me up. That was crazy. That was crazy. That was crazy. Yeah, I remember there was a movie Kern. I remember Rambo Rap talking about it. I'm sorry, go ahead. Kern, the the squeal like a pig guy? He was Kern in First Blood. He, yeah, he was, was. Yeah. He was. Yeah. He was a show. He was like the, yeah, the, the, the state police guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's the one that uh, Brian Dead, he uh, gave shit to. Listen, Dave, don't give me any of your poor shit if your shit's on this one. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it when the guy comes in and he's like, you know, they... They were quite hard on the guy, and then Kern turns out he's like, assholes. That's one of my favorite scenes. That's one of my favorite scenes. He's got an, ex scene an extended scene with Troutman, actually. Uh, on yeah, the I saw cut. that. When he, when he talked about he, he should have left Rambo alone. Yeah. And it, 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 you kind of see that tease old didn't really have any discrimination against Rambo. He, he was just trying to help him out. He, he didn't want him to get to get to get picked on. That's why he, he pulled him out of town. Yeah. And I'm glad they didn't put that in because it makes you feel more sympathy for Tito. Yeah. So I'm glad they didn't put that in. I do like Troutman's comeback line. They're like they're like uh before he says, you know, like that Rambo is one of the best that the special forces produced, he's like that boy's a heart attack. You know, like, you're going to take him, that boy's a heart attack. You know, like, they should have left that line in. Because that yeah, was a great lead into his speech, you know. And that's, exactly. that speech is just, fuck, man. I remember seeing First Blood for the first time when I was a little kid and seeing Krenna deliver that speech, like, when you first meet Krenna and and I just, I just remember sitting there buying it, you know, almost like this guy could tell me this in real life and I would believe it, you know, like, just his mannerisms, you know, just like, to live off the land, exactly. to eat things that would make a billy goat puke, you know, I just remember it being like, shit. He had a great delivery, of course, the best part about that speech when he says, a good supply of body bags. That's the that's the best line he said in that movie when he said that line. Yeah. When you when you said that when he said that line, it's like you can feel it as well. It's like if it, it goes down into your bones, you actually that's that's my favorite line he ever said in that movie. When he said that line. Yeah. It's like when even Stallone on the commentary of First Blood, when he said that, it's like it's like depth, depth store. It's like duh, 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 duh. When he still only even did that on the commentary. Right after Krenn said that on the commentary, he was like duh, 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 duh. It's like yeah. depth. It's like a, a depth store. Definitely. Like depth is knocking on the door. Duh, 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 yeah. duh. 